thinking about our velocity. Like, eh. Are we you, you good? Yes. Cool. Okay. Velocity phases, right? Thinking about our velocity at the instant when our mass is at the equilibrium position and it's heading to the right in the positive direction. It's going that phase is going to rotate around to be positive maximum, so that's going to move across to the right, because right is positive. What's the velocity going to be at that instant? So we're going to draw on a velocity phase or that's maximum and it's headed right. As we draw that on, we've suddenly realised that we haven't got the same scale for these two phase ors. Right? Displacement is measured in metres, whereas velocity is measured in metres per second. So although we're drawing them onto the same circle, we're very aware that it's kind of like a having two different graph lines with different um, units on the same graph, like it can be misleading, so we just have to be aware of that. So that's our velocity phase order there. And if we're going to work out how much, um, how much the length of that velocity phase order must be, we're going to come to our rotational mechanics, our V equals R omega, which is the equation for linking like the speed of a point on a rotating object to the radius that it's at and the rate of rotation, like the angular velocity. And so we're going to make V max. The maximum speed is going to be when the radius is the amplitude. Like we're talking about the, a point out here, right at the radius of the circle, at the amplitude. And so V max is a omega. And so we can know that the length of our velocity phase or is going to be A omega. In the same way that we knew that the length of the displacement phase or was just A sin Just A. Because the sin omega t tells us how it goes up and down. The A tells us how much it is. <coughs> about what would happen 
if we if we let it turn through that angle there, theta equals omega t. If we let the phase or turn through that angle there, theta is omega t. And we know that each of these phasors must have the length a omega, a omega. And the question we're asking then is how much, what's the value of v at that point there? So we have to be able to write an equation for how much is the value of, of v like there. And we're kind of, our way of thinking about it is to put a v axis there, right? That's measuring our velocity in meters per second. We're saying, okay, so how much is it there? We know that up there, it was a omega. How much is it going to be down here? How do we work out? True. How do we work out? We could trigger it. And in fact, check that out. Oh, that's a cool wet triangle, isn't it? You like that one? <laughs> Wait, wait. Do you see that triangle there? The, I probably made it misleading by drawing that. Yeah, that's that's that. Thinking we're gonna do that. Is that better? Sure. Well, you could use that other tool. Well, you can just go 90 minus. Yeah, yeah but we don't want to make like, We want things to be pretty. So we're going to do that. Alright. So which side are we trying to find? Um, that one. That one, that one there. Oh, yeah. Like, like that's, the, <laughs> that's the same. That's that. that that height there. Wait, Which side's that? <laughs> Hypotenuse adjacent. Oh, adjacent. So that's adjacent. The adjacent. What trig function are we going to use? Pat. Uh, oh, sorry. Cos, because we know the hypotenuse is A omega. So we've got cos theta is A over H. We are trying to find A over H. We're trying to find the A. So A is H cos. Do theta. How much is the H? A W. A omega. <laughs> How much is the theta? Uh, w T omega T. Omega, 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 omega T. And notice that we're putting that omega T in brackets because when we're cosing, we're cosing the whole omega T because it's distance and angle turned is equal to the rate at which angles are turning times by the time. So. At any instant, V is A omega cos omega T. So, you calculus gurus from last time, we had Y equals A sin omega T. And we know that V is dy by dt, the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. How far, how, what's the rate of change of distance by time? Is speed. So we're going to differentiate, sin differentiates to cos. So we know we're going to end up with a cos omega t. Omega t, with respect to t, differentiates to just omega. So out the front we've got a omega cos omega t. And we're like, damn, that was easy, wasn't it? Compared to all this fat thing here. But we got there. We got the same answer. And that's why we didn't want to have a 90 minus thing in there. these equations on your formula sheet aren't that helpful because there's two, you'll notice on your formula sheet there's like two columns of equations. There's one that's got like um, y equals a sin omega t, v equals a omega cos omega t, and a oh, yeah. is minus a omega squared sin omega t, and then there's another column. But actually we can have a whole, like three sets of equations, a displacement, velocity, and acceleration that are going to fit whatever starting point we have. And we don't just have two starting points on our phase or diagram. We could, like, we could start time anywhere in the motion. And so being able to use a phase or diagram is much more helpful. Um, how, does the, how does calculus work when you've got the displacement, like going to like at maximum displacement, and the velocities is like the rate of change of that displacement. Mm -hmm. So then you've got acceleration, which is the rate of change of the rate of change. Mm -hmm. so the rate of change is going backwards. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, differentiate cars, what do you get? 
A negative sign. Negative sign was the minus sign. Right? Oh, directions. Okay. Opposite direction. Double way. Way. Oh, it's it's all works out at the end. Oh, that's what happened. So, yeah, ready for acceleration. 